So in the last session we discussed message queues and if you haven't seen that I would request you to please watch it to get a better perspective on the session. So in today's episode we will be talking about AWS Simple Queue service. So if you are ready, let's begin. So Amazon Simple Queue service or SQS is a fully managed message queuing service that enables you to decouple and scale microservices, distributed systems and serverless application. This is what AWS tells us. Here as well, just like message queue, we have a producer who actually has messages that they want to process and we have our consumers who are waiting to process these messages. And to propagate these messages in AWS, we make use of AWS SQS, also known as Simple Queue Service. So producers push these messages or tasks to the AWS SQS queue for them to be executed with the consumers at hand. But we need to dig deep into SQS. For this, we need to understand this entity clearly. So let's talk about the architecture of AWS SQS. So to understand the architecture of SQS, we need to talk about the concept of distributed messaging systems and the lifecycle of an Amazon SQS message. So there are three main parts in a distributed messaging system. The first one is the components of a distributed system. These components are your producers and consumers. By now, I think everyone is aware of what a consumer and a producer is. The second one is the queue or what we have as our AWS SQS distributed queue. And the third one is the most important one that are the messages in the queues itself. So let's bring up the components then. So if you see these components, one, two, three, so that can be your producer component, as I already said before, producers are the components that send message to the queue and we can have our consumer components as well that actually receive the messages from the queue. And that can be multiple producers and consumers. The queue that you see here holds messages one through six, which is stored redundantly across multiple SQS servers. So you need to understand that SQS is a service and you are not the only one using it. There are multiple users using the same service at the same point of time. So I hope the basic concepts are clear. We have the components which are basically our producers and consumers and then we have our queues which are distributed on the SQS servers and the messages are stored redundantly across multiple Amazon SQS servers. So let's talk about another concept that you need to understand and that is Amazon SQS visibility timeout. As I already told you before that a producer pushes the messages onto the messaging queue or the message queue and it stays there until the consumer processes it and then it gets deleted. But what happens here is that when a consumer gets the message from the queue and processes it, it remains in the queue and SQS does not delete it automatically. You might ask why? The reason is that AWS SQS is a distributed system. And if we automatically delete messages, we may not know if the consumer actually received the message and processed it. For example, how would you feel if WhatsApp or Facebook starts deleting messages automatically without having the knowledge of whether it has been read by the receiver or not, by your friend or not. So in SQS, the consumer itself must delete the message from the queue after receiving and processing it. So here, when the message is received, it remains on the queue and to prevent other consumers to process this message again and again, SQS sets a visibility timeout. So the default value of visibility timeout in SQS is 30 seconds, the minimum is 0 seconds and the maximum that you can set is 12 hours. And this visibility timeout is applied to the queue on the whole and not specifically to the message itself. Okay. So the timeline that you see here represents the life of the message within the queue and as and when the message is received, it is out for consumption or processing by the consumer and once the message is returned, the visibility timeout starts so that it's hidden from other consumers to be consumed. But other consumers keep hitting the receive request or the receive message request to the queue and as the visibility timeout is still in progress and the message is still not processed, the response to the receive message for that message ID will be false. So once the visibility timeout is set to zero or the timeout has elapsed, the consumer which sends the receive message request will be able to receive and process the message. 
So to ensure the same message is not processed again, we must ensure that the delete message or the delete message request is sent to the queue in order to delete the message after it has been processed. Okay, and a very important thing is to understand is that in case of a failure, the producer can retry sending the requests as many times as necessary using the same message deduplication ID. The same way the consumers upon receiving a failure receive message response can retry as many times as necessary using the same receive request attempt ID. So if a consumer receives a message from a message group ID, there will be no more messages from the same message group ID that will be sent until the message has been deleted or it is visible. So you might ask what if the visibility timeout expires before the consumer has processed the message. For that, we need to set an appropriate timeout value to ensure the message is deleted before the timeout expires. And then you might ask, how will I know how much time it is going to take for the message to be processed? For this, AWS tells us to set a heartbeat and to set the timeout to be a reasonable value, for example, two to three minutes, and then gradually improvising on that so that it matches the expected value that you have or the time it actually takes to process your message by the consumer. There is another situation that we might face like what if the queue visibility timeout is insufficient for a message. Then in that situation, when you receive the message, you can also set a special visibility timeout for the return message without changing the overall queue timeout. So it will not affect the whole queue, it will affect only the message itself. And we can shorten or increase the message's visibility by specifying a new timeout value using the change message visibility option. So these changes only apply to the recipient of the message and not timeout of the later messages or the overall queue. So I think this was a lot of information and if you feel confused, do watch this video portion again so that your concepts are cleared. So if this was clear, let's move on. So here we will talk about the life cycle of the message from start to end that is from creating to deleting the message in AWS SQS. In the first step, the producer is our component one that pushes the message one to the queue and the visibility timeout clock is set to 45 seconds. Okay, so this is the time that has been set to 45 seconds. And then these messages are spread across the distributed SQS queues. So as you can see, one is distributed across multiple SQS queues redundantly. And in the second part or the second step that we have, the component two that you have, which is our consumer, takes that message one and starts processing it and message one is returned. So for the duration of the message processing and during its visibility timeout period, it is not returned when any consumer sends a message receive request. So during this elapsed time, like let's suppose it, it has already uh, cross 10 seconds within that period the visibility timeout is already for 45 seconds so for that portion of time for those 45 seconds any consumer who sends message received request will not get the message and thus it is not visible to other consumers as well in the third step the consumer deletes the message from the queue in order to prevent it from reprocessing by other consumers when the visibility timeout expires so here what we are doing is we are deleting the message that we had processed before the timeout has expired. So within 35 seconds, we have actually processed the message and we have deleted the message before the timeout has expired. So I think this was pretty simple, isn't it? Creation to deletion. So this is the message life cycle. So I hope this was clear. Let's move on. So as I've already told several times that uh, Amazon SQS is a fully managed message queue service that enables you to decouple and scale microservices, distributed systems and serverless application, Amazon SQS offers two type of messaging queues. So the first one is the standard queue which provides maximum throughput, best effort ordering and at least once delivery. The second one is very popular that is the FIFO queue which are designed to guarantee that messages are processed exactly once in the exact order that they are sent. So let's talk about some of the differences between standard and FIFO queues. So standard queue, so the standard queue supports nearly an unlimited number of transactions per second that is called TPS per API action. It's best known for unlimited throughput. And when we speak of at least once delivery, here a message is delivered at least once, but occasionally more than one copy of a message is delivered. So a standard queue tries to ensure the message is delivered at least once. 
Sometimes in standard queues, message might be delivered in any order different from which they were sent. As you can see in the example here, the message are not sent serialized based on the order that they were sent. And that's also called as best effort ordering. Okay, so moving on to the FIFO queue. So the first point is that FIFO queue provides high throughput. So by default, FIFO queue supports up to 300 messages per second. It means that you can make 300 send messages receive messages or delete messages operation per second and if you wish to enhance that you can batch up to 10 messages per operation which is basically a maximum and in that way fifo queue can support up to 3000 messages per second and if you want to increase that further you can talk to the aws guys so that uh, they can increase your quota the second point that we have here is with fifo you will see the processing of the message exactly once so here a message is delivered once and remains available until consumer processes it and deletes it. And thus it ensures that duplicates aren't introduced into the queue. That is very good. And the third point that we have here, which I believe should have been the first point to be discussed actually, but no issues. As everyone here knows FIFO means first in first out so that the order in which messages are sent and received is strictly preserved. Okay. So if you see the example here, they travel in the same way as first in first out. The basic use case of standard queues can be, let's suppose you are uploading videos to YouTube and the encoding and processing of your videos can take place at the same time. And if suppose you want to execute batch operations with multiple workers or consumers, you can do that with standard queues. But for FIFO, as the sending and receiving of messages are strict, these are used when you need a sequential execution, like executing a set of commands that needs sequential execution. Next up, let's discuss the features of SQS. The first point is payload size. The message payload can contain up to 256 KB of text in any format. So each 64 KB chunk of the payload is built as one request. So if your payload size is 256 KB and if we divide them into 64, then we get four. So if you send a payload of 256 KB, it will be counted as four requests. So the max size of the message payload that can have is basically 256 KBs and every chunk of 64 KB is built as one request. So if you send 256 KB, if you divide that into four, so then you will be built for four requests. And batches, so if you want to enhance your messaging, you can batch up to 10 messages per operation, which is a maximum. In that way, FIFO queues can support up to 3000 messages per second. And if you want to increase that further, you need to talk to AWS so that you can increase your quota. I think this we have already discussed. And long polling. So long polling is a feature that we will discuss later on. But just imagine if the messages are being pushed very slowly onto the queue and you keep on sending receive message requests frequently, then it is basically a waste of request where you get empty responses. So we can introduce something like a long polling that waits for a period of time before sending the next request. And if the wait time is more than zero, then long polling is in effect. And the maximum long polling that we have in AWS SQS or the wait time is actually 20 seconds. Okay, so we can have the maximum time for long polling as 20 seconds in AWS SQS. And you can retain messages in the queue for about 14 days. The default message retention period is four days and we can set the message retention period of a value from 60 seconds to 14 days using the set queue attribute action. And the fifth point that we have here is you can as well send and receive messages simultaneously. And the sixth point is also very important and it's a very good feature message locking. When a message is actually received, it becomes locked while it is being processed. And the next point that we have here is we can share Amazon SQS queues anonymously or with any specific AWS account that you want. And the next one is the eight point. When it comes to security, we can protect the contents of messages in the AWS SQS queues using keys managed in AWS key management service or what we call as AWS KMS. And dead letter queue is also a very important feature. And for every message, uh, I can tell you that you can add a maximum receive count. Okay. And if suppose the message has not been successfully processed by a consumer upon several retries as well, and once the maximum receive count is exceeded for the message, those can be pushed to the dead letter queue. And you can set up separate consumers to process or delete or analyze them so as to why these messages failed. Don't worry, we will discuss this in length in a short while. So just now we discussed dead letter queue. So now let's see the visualization here. Here as well, 
we have our component that is the producer which will be pushing messages to be processed and we have the simple messaging queue or the simple message queue here and we have our two consumers waiting to process the message so this time around what happened was the message was not processed successfully then what it will do is it will keep on retrying so here the retry policy that we have here is set to five times so upon five retries the message will be pushed to the dead letter queue and on the other hand if the message was processed successfully you can send a delete request to delete or kill the message from the queue okay and this is how dead letter queue is used and as i had already described this before as well once the maximum receive count is exceeded for a message those can be pushed to the dead letter queues and you can set up separate consumers here to process or delete or analyze them so as to why these messages failed okay so i hope this was clear let's move on so now let's talk about long polling i would want to divide this into two parts long and polling to provide you a better understanding with respect to time so if i ask you what can be considered long in terms of time then you might say it can be that uh, it takes longer time or the duration is for a longer period of time or the time frame that we have is longer than the scheduled or expected time and polling you have to understand it with a scenario where you are checking the status of a particular entity or job or that can be a task periodically at a regular interval of time which you should remember is a synchronous task when we combine both of these terms and make it long polling it means that you are checking for the existence of a job or entity periodically at regular intervals and that too not immediately okay let's come back to long polling in terms of aws sqs so here we have our producers and we have our aws sqs simple message queue and our consumer so in a situation if the messages are being pushed very slowly onto the queue and the wait time for the receive message api action is greater than zero long polling is in effect and if the consumer is asking or requesting for the message from the queue and it has no messages across the sqs servers and you keep on sending receive messages requests frequently then it is basically a waste of requests where you get only empty responses because there is nothing in the queue and you keep on polling for the messages again and again again and again and what are you getting from this you're getting nothing you're just getting empty responses okay and that is a very costly affair so that is why i have mentioned here like if the consumer is asking or requesting for the message from the queue and it has no message across the sqs servers and if you keep on sending receive message requests frequently then it is basically a waste of requests where you get only empty responses and as i said when the wait time of the receive message api action is greater than zero the long polling is in effect so how can we reduce the cost of api calls the solution is to provide a long polling where we apply a wait time that you see here so that the request is sent periodically after a polling time is reached so let's suppose we set a polling time of 10 seconds then the consumer will send the request message call every 10 second and amazon sqs sends an empty response only if the polling wait time expires so once the 10 second mark has crossed only then sqs sends you the response back if it is empty when we use long polling so you might be a bit confused here so let's suppose there is nothing here no messages when we apply a long polling so let's suppose it is for 10 seconds then until the 10 second mark has expired you will not get the response back that it is empty okay so after the long polling has expired then only you will get an empty response in that way you don't need to send the request message calls repeatedly to the queue okay and that is how we are saving the cost of api calls so as per aws sqs the maximum polling time that we can have or the wait time is 20 seconds so here you need to decide that what is the most appropriate waiting time uh, that is the wait time seconds to set your long polling of the message and you have to remember that this point that uh, amazon sqs provides short polling and long polling to receive messages from the queue so there are two types of polling as well so one is the short polling and one is the long polling and by default queues use short polling not the long polling so with short polling the receive message request query is only a subset of the servers to find messages that are available to include in the response 
and with long polling the receive message request queries all the servers for the message and the one important thing that you need to understand the difference is in short polling amazon sqs sends the response right away even if the query found is no message and in long polling amazon sqs sends an empty response only if the polling wait time expires and that is why we use long polling if we want to save api call costs so i hope that was clear let's move on so now let's do a recap on the overall messaging process in aws sqs so we have our producers who hold the messages to be processed and we have a simple message queue and the consumers so if we push a message to the queue it will reach the consumer upon successful request response and if there is no message or if there are no message we can apply long polling so that we can save cost of api calls where we have to deal with empty responses so by default sqs has short polling and we can also implement long polling based on the requirement and if there is a failure in the message processing we can have a retry policy where we can set a specific number of times the messages can be uh, reprocessed or retried and if the retry policy exceeds it will be pushed to the dead letter queue and then you can have consumers to process these failed messages so as to analyze why it failed and if the message was processed successfully then your consumers can send the delete message request to the queue for the message to be deleted and one thing you need to remember is within the visibility timeout period i hope the whole idea of how message queue and sqs works were clear and uh, i hope you got the gist of what we are trying to achieve here so this was the end of the part of aws sqs but we will need to discuss aws sns and aws kinesis to get the whole picture of aws messaging and aws data streaming I understand there is a lot of information that we have pushed in to these videos but to cover so many details in so less time it's very hard so I would request you to go through the AWS documentations for a better understanding or if you want to read other APIs and protocols that are used you can go through the AWS documentation that would be my recommendation to learn more on these concepts so if you like what you saw please hit the like button comment on what you liked what you didn't Make sure you subscribe to the channel and let's be friends on Instagram. Join me at Tafara Polo and to watch more, please click on the videos on the tab shown in the screen. Until then, it's Pythaholic signing off. <laughs>